Welcome to Launch Out 2015. I'm so happy to be here and I am so honored to have the opportunity to talk to you about some of the things that I've done and learned about building um, a successful community of people who love you and love your work. Um, I have these wonderful handout sheets back at my table if you want them, you know, great to take notes, but didn't get them out to you before the conference. So, a um, little of what I'm going to share with you is original to me. I've learned from a lot of people over the years, uh, too many people to mention. Uh, some of my mentors have been Amy Porterfield, Shailene Johnson, uh, Dagan Smith, Daniel Hall, uh, just a, a huge list of people. I've taken what I've learned, modified it, changed it, made it work for me. Um, and, but let's just jump right in. There are a few essential tools that you need to have if you want to have a commanding web presence. And one of the most important is, of course, a website. And um, I highly recommend that you get a domain name. Very important. Uh, you can purchase and register a domain for $25 or less. I use GoDaddy for that. You can also uh, pay for hosting for as little as $5 a month. I use HostGator for that. Um, that's going to be your home base. All of your other accounts should point to your website. I strongly, strongly recommend you get yourname.com if it's available. No matter what business you're in, no matter what product you're selling, you're selling yourself first and foremost. So it's good to have a website with your name. Um, Good things about having a website uh, or a domain name of your own are you have complete control over your content. And another important factor is that if the company that you are supporting disappears tomorrow, they don't take your website and all of your contacts with them. So uh, most people also think that a domain name is more professional than say yourname.com uh, or your name at tripod.com. And yes, I did have one of those websites in the 80s. <laughs> I use WordPress for my content management system. It's free, it's versatile, and it's easy. Um, if you're trying to run a Facebook, uh, if you're trying to run your business on a Facebook personal profile, stop it. Your family doesn't like that, your friends don't like that, Facebook doesn't like that, and they can shut you down for doing that. So, your task, your mission this weekend is to go set up a fan page on Facebook for your business. In fact, I want you to do it tonight before you go to bed. <laughs> it, it's easy, trust me. Come see me if you think you're just, it's not going to be easy. Um, <laughs> then you can take things from your fan page and you can share them on your personal profile page. I just recommend that you make those things that are inspirational or motivational or entertaining instead of things that are salesy. I use Twitter for my other main um, social media platform. That may not work for you. That may not be where your fan base is. There are tons of social media platforms out there. What I don't recommend is that you try to set up a, a platform on all of them simultaneously. You'll make yourself crazy and you will spread yourself way too thin. So now that your platforms are set up, how do you get fans? How do you get followers? How many people in the room have ever done MLM? Show hands. You have quite a few of you. Probably you discovered that you burn through your warm list pretty quickly, your friends and your family, right? Well, newsflash, they are probably not your target market anyway. So forget about them. Even though you think that what you have to offer everybody is for everybody, Everybody is not your target audience. You've got to narrow it down a bit from there if you ever want to have a group of people who is active and engaged with what you're doing. So what does your audience look like? You might be a little bit surprised to find out they look a lot like you. Maybe a younger version of you, a less experienced and I just lost sound, oh. <laughs> but you probably have a lot in common with your target audience. There are basically two ways 
to get people to follow you. One is organically and the other is paid or through ads. I am a firm believer in Facebook ads. Unfortunately, I don't have time to teach Facebook marketing today. But I can tell you that if you invest a little bit of time and money in creating a strong base of fans, the organic growth is going to happen naturally as people interact with you on your page. So how often should you post? I have to chuckle every time a veterinarian tells me, well, if I post every day, I'm going to lose followers and fans. It's just too much. <laughs> My personal recommendation is you want to post every hour. <clears throat> every hour may seem like a lot, but here's why. First of all, no one is going to see every one of your posts. Facebook isn't going to show them everything because they're not going to think it's relevant to them. And even if they do put your post in that person's news feed, what's going to happen is that person's not going to log on right away. And by the time they do, they've had hundreds of other posts in their feed and you're buried and they'll never see you. So if you want your post to be seen, you've got to post every day and you have to post often. So this is, I don't hit this every day, I try. For how many of you, uh, how many of you have a full-time job and your hustle is just a side thing? Yeah, okay. You're going to find out that you day job, you're going to find out that your day job and your life in general will get in the way and sometimes you're not going to achieve your goal. Just do the best that you can. Now, your schedule may not look like mine. It's going to you know, really be based on your business and on your customer base. So uh, what you will notice is that I only have a couple of uh, posts on this schedule that have anything to do with fitness or health, and only one post a day that has anything to do with sales. And I don't even post a sales pitch every day. So it, it's very important. Most of my posts are motivational and inspirational. Uh, there are a lot of pictures and quotes, and these usually get pretty high engagement. My word of the day, which is one of the first posts that I do in the day, really helps me set the theme for the day and helps me create content. For instance, if my word of the day is strength, I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to Google quotations on strength. And the results of that are going to give me a lot of my content, and I'm going to whip that together and schedule it right then and there. So um, almost nothing I post is live, except for responses to comments that other people make on my page. Now, completely different story on my work account. My work account um, for the veterinary hospital, that, um, it is live. Every post on that page is posted live. None of them are scheduled. And you have to put yourself in the shoes of your audience. What is it that they want to see? Here, people are going to want to see their pet. They're going to want to see a picture of their dog or their cat. They're going to want to know what the status is of their surgery. They're going to want to make sure they made it through surgery. Uh, this is what I post. On my fitness page, I found that the two most popular posts are either uh, quote cards or pictures with quotes on them or videos. Um, you can use Facebook Insights to see what's working best, and then you just want to make sure that you post more of that type of content. You can use analytics to drill down and really get more information about what's working. You can see how many people have liked your posts, commented on them, shared them, etc. So some of you spend a lot of time on social media. I've seen you there, and I can tell you I am totally envious. I wish I could spend that much time there. Some of the rest of you, I'm sure, don't get to spend much time on social media. So you're probably wondering, when should I post? What's the best time to post? And again, Facebook analytics can help you with that. If you take a look at my analytics, it will show you that most of my customers interact with my page between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. So, of course, that's where I'm going to post most of my content is during that time frame. Um, so the next tip is a little Twitter tip. And it's something that I've never heard anyone teach before, but it's something I kind of discovered on my own. Um, I usually recommend you brand absolutely everything you post so that people can find you easily and get more content from you. But in this case, I recommend that you do not. 
Um, let's say you want to get the attention of somebody. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use Darren Hardy from Success Magazine. I did this little quote card that uh, I posted and tagged him in it. And he not only favorited it, but he retweeted it. What happened was that put me on his favorites page. It put me in, his, uh, in, in the feed of his people who follow him as well. And when you went there and you clicked on this picture, it took you, there was this nifty little link underneath the, the picture that said, click here for more photos. And I thought, oh, more stuff on Darren Hardy. So I clicked on it and I was shocked. No, it took me to my own photos on Twitter, all of which were branded. And it's like, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, you know, obviously if anyone then clicked on any of those or, or favorited them or shared them, uh, gave me more reach. So um, in the fitness world, for instance, how cool is it to be favorited and retweeted by Brett Hobel, who's a celebrity fitness trainer and uh, was on The Biggest Loser? I have been, so, you know, there's a, there's a goal for you. If you've been on the internet for any length of time, you've probably heard there's money in the list, but how do you build a list? Well, my way of building my list is I published a Kindle book. And before you freak out and think you're not an author and you can't publish a Kindle book, it doesn't have to be something big. It can actually even just be a short report. But what you want to do is in the preface, you want to offer a special, Thing just for your um, Kindle readers and here you'll see I have a link that goes to my offer just for my Kindle readers and if they click on that then they can download a, another book that I've written that's on fitness facts and all they have to do is enter their name and their email address and then boom they're on my email list. Um, how often do you email people? Depends on the person. Uh, it depends on your customers. Depends on a lot of factors. I know people who email their list twice a day. First time in the morning, it's just an informational thing. Second time um, in the day, it's more of a sales pitch. Uh, do what works for you. Chris Brogan, I'm on his list. He emails like once a day and once a week, it's a sales pitch. Um, you have to experiment a little bit. Um, so I've given you lots of information, lots of tools. I'm going to just really quickly give you a few more tools because I'm pretty much out of time. I create a lot of my images in Shara's image. There's a free version um, that puts their logo on the picture, so I recommend that you uh, actually subscribe to AppSumo. Every now and then they will offer a uh, $20 lifetime version of Shara's image, and that way it doesn't have their watermark on it. Um, they have a good selection of images that you can use free of charge. I also use Pixlr.com to edit and brand my pictures and quote cards. This is a free website and all app and also a phone app. Um, Canva is an amazing free tool. They have a good variety of free stock photos, and they also have pictures available that you can buy for $1. Um, they also have a variety of sizes that, that you can choose from for your posts. If you're lazy or pressed for time or have a creative block and just want something to post quickly, I recommend Post Planner. Now, everything on Post Planner is already branded with somebody else's information, so you're going to want to use this sparingly. But if you choose something like, for instance, there's one on there I think that has 13.3 thousand uh, shares. That one's a pretty good bet that you're going to get good engagement if you share that one on your page. And I do that, and they do get good engagement. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I set up most of my posts in advance by scheduling them. I use Sprout Social for that. Um, I use a paid version of it because I like the analytics I get from Sprout Social. But you could also use um, Hootsuite, and Hootsuite can be free. You know, they have the paid version as well, but their free version is fine. Um, you know, finally, I, I just have to say, I, I hope you got you take good notes this weekend. You are going to get so much great information from so many people uh, to help you with your launch. Remember, whatever you do, be yourself, take what works for you, improvise, and go ahead and jump. Thank you.